Hello everyone, welcome to From the Star Wars Library, where Star Wars is in print, the Force is with the readers, and we are returning to 1979 for the last of the newspaper strips by Russ Manning. I'm your host, Nathan P. Butler, and this time, we're taking a look at Princess Leia, Imperial Servant. It ran from November 7th through December 31st of 1979, kind of cutting it close there for being in 1979. It's also been reprinted in the relatively recent past here, in the year, gosh, what was it, 1994, in the pages of issue number five of classic Star Wars, The Early Adventures. This story is an odd one. It introduces a couple of interesting bits, but it's not all that great of a read in and of itself. The idea is that Leia is on a rebel mission, just her and her pilot, and they're above the planet Falerion, I believe is how you pronounce it. It's P H E L. A-R-I-O-N. Felerion. Yeah, that works. Star Wars names. You can sometimes not pronounce them. Um, and they wind up being attacked, and the only way to save Leia is to launch her in this so-called gossamer glider, like an escape pod type thing, kind of shaped almost like a, a coffin, down to the planet below, which is an imperial mining colony. And they're mining Meganite, which is this explosive thing to make explosive ammunition that Darth Vader very much wants. There's also a group of men there who, uh, it's basically ma two main guys, but they are trying to essentially smuggle this stuff out to possibly go to Rebels, just basically to make some money for themselves. Turns out they're trying to smuggle it out with the help of Han Solo, of all people, which is going to allow Leia to eventually manage to escape from the planet. But while they're there, there's all this conspiracy stuff about where's the Mega Knight going, who's stealing it, uh, why are the numbers not working out the way they're supposed to compared to what's coming out of the mines and what's actually winding up being shipped and blah, 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 blah. And it's all getting the woman in charge of this operation very anxious as Darth Vader eventually arrives and investigates. Vader will realize that Leia is there and wind up pursuing her. Again, as I said, she will escape with Han Solo. What makes this unusual is the circumstances for Leia and the woman who is holding her captive. Basically, Leia shows up, and Leia becomes a servant. She pretends to be a person under a different name, and under this new alias, she just yet another serving girl at this estate. The first hint we get as to who is in charge comes in the form of a plaque put up by the woman in charge of this place. It says, in memory of my husband, we serve the Empire faithfully. That's okay. Well, Husband, you know, that could be just about anybody, you know, anybody who has also served the Empire. What's the big deal? The big deal is who the character is when we meet her. You're reading that right. Lady Tarkin. The Lassa Tarkin, Grand Moff Tarkin's wife, or in this case now, his widow. Yes, Lady Tarkin, Mama Tarkin, as we find out later on in uh, Darth Vader and the Lost Command, apparently there is a child involved here. Um, Lady Tarkin, Mama Tarkin, Mrs. Tarkin, she also is a cruel Imperial witch. And I don't mean witch in the sense of being a sorceress, I just mean uh, she's got a personality that could uh, scrape paint off walls just by speaking. Um, Leia winds up running afoul of her. Vader essentially winds up at one point uh, uh, threatening her because of the idea that this rebel operation is going on under her nose. She must be a conspirator with it. And it's just kind of an interesting time to see the impact of the death of Tarkin on someone else other than a rebel. Now, the story in and of itself, not all that memorable, really. I mean, it doesn't really do a whole lot to advance the character of Leia or Han or Chewie who appear in it. Um, it's basically just a quick little throwaway story, as a lot of the newspaper strip stories were. But the fact that we get to see the impact on the Tarkin family makes this unusual. I would also point out something that has become more of an issue recently, but it's one of those blink and you'll miss it type of things you may not even realize is there when you're reading. You have this big imperial guy that Leia winds up uh, uh, blasting in the face with this freezing thing here. This man is identified as Shea or Shea, S-H-E-A, Hublin. So, Shea Hublin or Shea Hublin, where have we heard that name in recent memory? I'll tell you where. He got a background article in the pages of Jason Fry and Paul Urquhart's the Essential Guide to Warfare, recently. Not only that, but as a tie-in to this, Star Wars Insider number, I believe it was 132, had a separate story called The Guns of Calrodo Eye, featuring Hublin. 
we are seeing a character originally created by Russ Manning back in 1979 and just made out to be this rebel destroyer, this imperial hero, finally getting a reason for that in background and materials being presented here after 2010. Decades and decades down the line, over 30 years since he was first introduced by Manning. That is almost a record. It's a very cool thing to see in something that Jason Fry and Dan Wallace and Abel Pena, a lot of those types of guys are really fond of doing in terms of Star Wars publications. And a big chronology guy like me, a big continuity guy like me, loves that sort of thing. So it's pretty cool to see him show up here after having appeared there, or the other way around, as the case may be here. So, Princess Leia, Imperial Servant. Classic Star Wars The Early Adventures number 5, for those who are reading it here or in the trade paperback form. Is it an essential read? Absolutely not. It's just an interesting read for that brief appearance of Shea Hublin, but also, of course, for Lady Tarkin and that insight into what happened with Tarkin's family after Wilhuff Tarkin died on the Death Star. Basically, he left her bitter and angry. Or maybe she was bitter and angry about that whole he was hooking up with Natasi Dalla thing. You think? In any event, wouldn't want to cross paths with this woman here. So, with that, we'll wrap this episode up. Thank you for watching, and may the Force be with the readers.